Okay, sip of coffee here, try and keep my voice going. And uh, I notice my voice is changing. Now, speaking of voices changing, uh, about a, not quite a year ago, I started watching the this television series NCIS. You know, the one with Mark Harmon? And uh, they're just renewing their 19th season, uh, which is kind of good news for me because I kind of got into it. And uh, what, what I want to say is that uh, because I watched, uh, you know, 18 years over a period of just a few months, uh, I, I noticed a change in the characters, especially in Mark Harmon, and I noticed uh, his voice changed quite dramatically, at least I thought it did. And uh, I am noticing that my voice is changing as well. I don't sound the same as I did in uh, videos that, you know, workshop videos that I did, you know, as far back as about eight years ago when I first started doing this kind of thing. <clears throat> Uh, I have to clear my throat a lot. I, I, I apologize for that, but I'm not going to be reshooting scenes every time I clear my throat. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that. So I like to have a sip of coffee before I say something. Well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Anyway, what you're going to be seeing me do here right now, uh, now this, this part here, we already nipped that off for some reason. Oh yeah, I remember now, we wanted to see how, how this would fit on the on the uh, existing parts that are already on the ship uh, but it, it might look as though I want to skip uh, step 51 here because the photo etch is difficult now I should maybe ma make another explanation here I do a lot of complaining about the photo etch and how hard it is and and uh, you know and this delicate little spidery thing and uh, yeah uh, I'm actually enjoying this. Um, I don't know. I've, I've got to quit complaining. Anyway, I'm going to get the rest of these pieces here. And, uh, well, there's, there's, a, there's a good reason why. And this is it. Yeah, I'm always really grateful when uh, other modelers, especially uh, experienced modelers like Steve here in the model shed, and he he, t he warns us of, of stuff that uh, is going to go wrong and we're going to have problems with further down the road. I appreciate these kind of comments. I know I've said that before, but I, I really do. Um, so let's uh, take heed and uh, look into this. And what, I want to look into it now because if I don't, I might forget about it. And then later on when I try to install this module on the, onto the par, other parts, uh, it's not going to fit. And I'm going to be thinking, now I, what do I do? And I'm going to be trying to file stuff down uh, while it's all together, and I'm going to be bending that spider. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's look into this now. I honestly haven't done it yet. Now, I had deliberately underexposed that scene there. My intention was so that you would notice how the snow was finally melting. Yeah, we got bare streets now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. And there's Kenny out walking his dog. <laughs> oh, the dog is still wearing a little coat. So if the dog's wearing a coat, I guess it's still cold outside, right? Okay, so what I think Steve is trying to tell us is that these pieces that, we, that we've got here now, the, this, this end here, we've, we've, we've got to adjust it so that these, these, this end that I'm grabbing onto right now, that, that will fit. You know, it'll, it'll fit in these, these holes that we drilled here. However, the, the other ends are kind of, kind of keyed. You can see it's keyed there, and the, the, the keys don't fit. Uh, and also, I, I don't know if he meant it or meant to uh, draw attention to it or not, but I'm noticing that that this part here has to go through these holes right here. Now, I, I know that we could test a lot of this out. For instance, uh, the short the short one goes somewhere in here, obviously. Somehow in here, you can see it's it's keyed a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so we've got to make sure everything's going to fit. 
And now I know we could do it with without putting this stuff together, but it would be kind of fun anyway. I have to, after all, we have to cut this anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, you know get my uh, get my uh, pliers here and my nippers here and, and nip these off. Uh, okay, this this piece we already got, so so that's this one here, B39. Uh, and and this piece is obviously the M4, so we've got that. Uh, we just have to get a it looks like a couple of others here. It'd be this one and this one. Now I think I may have alluded to this before, but if I use my my heavy duty cutters here, you know the ones that I custom made here a couple of years ago when we did the Bismarck. And the the thinking at that time was to to save my my expensive to me and nippers because the more you use these little nippers, the more you're going to wear them out every time they, in my opinion anyway, every time they snap together, you slightly dull the sharp edges because that's how the why these things are so effective they they have two two very sharp edges that you know come together. And every time you bring them together, I do believe they probably dull very minutely, but they dull nonetheless. So the, uh, my thinking was if I made these and did the heavy-duty cutting with, with these ones, that, uh, uh, you know, I would save on the little ones. Uh, I'm beating this to death, aren't I? However, uh, I, I found that these ones here, that when you cut down here on the on the larger the larger part of the sprue, the they do spread the the two parts like the on both sides it will spread, and now there there is a way a person can kind of do it like, I guess you could come at it like this so that when it spreads it doesn't it doesn't push this way and this way it it lifts up and and pushes down so in, in this case I could probably get away with it and I could I could do that otherwise let's just let's try it here okay now the, there was no lateral force this way and this way which would in turn where's something I can point with okay which, which in, in turn would have a tendency to break this little uh, part off of the splinter rail. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you can get away with, with, with using the big nippers and other times you might want to just use the little nippers and, and uh, just, just very carefully just on the end there, you know, if you, if you have to do it like this, then, then there's going to be less damage. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not making a whole lot of sense here, but uh, okay, we can we can use these big ones here because it's gonna it's gonna lift. Now, of course, on this one, it it doesn't matter because everything is loose there, and uh, and then I can carefully carefully trim everything up afterwards. I can probably get away now. When when I remo remove this part here, I can probably get away with only one nip, and I might have to do very little sanding or filing, if I'm careful. Um, yeah, we've been down this road before, haven't we? Okay, so now we don't need to worry about this one. We can just let it go. And and oh, another thing I I have uh, now this is just a theory. I've never tested it to see, but. Uh, if if I can slowly squeeze everything together, so that when the when the nipper snaps together, the uh, the 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 snap, if you know what I mean, is as uh, gentle as possible. Hope I made sense here. Okay, I think I've done a pretty good job of not getting divots in my splinter rails when I was nipping the uh, pieces of sprue off. Um, Anyway, this is uh, actually going to be the first time that I'm trying to assemble this. I've done it in my mind, but this is uh, the first time for real. Okay, so this is this piece here, obviously. Then this piece here is supposed to 
key. I guess those little pegs right there must fit somehow in here. Well, that's kind of fitting together, but not, not what you'd call real good. Okay, let's just check that. Maybe it has to just sort of snap together. I'm just going to take it off camera here. Now, that was a very tight fit, and I'm kind of worried now that when I pull it apart, I might actually pull the peg right off of this part here. That's, yeah, that was unusually tight. I don't think uh, I've, maybe what I should have done is, uh, well, I guess if I was to be doing it for, you know, for real, I would have put some extra thin on the pegs, and they would have sort of melded together. Um, anyway, we'll worry about that later. Now, that means that this piece here is supposed to go, oh, this way. Uh, yeah, it goes... like this. This isn't really wanting to fit fit too good. Okay, once again I'm going to have to take it off camera here. Okay, this is a, a very tight fit here. Um, I had trouble sliding sliding this piece up into the various little places where it's supposed to go. Alright, now then this piece here just drops down onto here. Apparently there's supposed to be another part goes goes here, but I'm I'm noticing that on on the bottom here there's slots and that would be for these let's see, yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is the first time I'm trying it, so here we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, I believe that's locked into place there. Okay, yeah, it did more or less fits. Oh, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. Did, did I do something wrong here? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to turn the camera off. Okay, here's the dilemma. These uh, pegs, these square pegs, are supposed to go into these square holes. And in order to get them to fit, I can get one, one side or the other side, but there's almost, uh, oh, going on a couple of millimeters here that this has to be spread apart like this and um, I can get it but it's yeah it's just uh, wondering if I'm doing something wrong here okay I can get it to, to stay as long as I hold it together like this with my fingers but uh, yeah it's a pretty tight fit as soon as I release you can see how it's starting to to come out there uh, Okay, once again, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. That's not what this is all about. What this was about was, you know, how, how well are these pieces going to fit, you know. <sighs> okay, I, I realize I'm doing a lot of humming and hawing here and not making up my mind, but I, I'm just wondering... Why don't I just go ahead and make this module now, even though we haven't done this step yet, uh, being as we're talking about these these parts not fitting properly, uh, you know, wanting to be able to check and make sure they're going to fit later. Um, now, I'm noticing here, this 
this piece here, <clears throat> excuse me, B51, it goes down right here. And this piece here is going to pretty much cover it up. It's going to be like the grand staircase in my Titanic model. Yeah, it looked great until you got the model together and you couldn't see any of it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, now, now this one right here, B11, that's going to go on the back right there. So so that one will will partially be visible. But anyway, I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to get the other these other two pieces. A lot of these smaller pieces that have to go on, we already got those. Uh, I'm pretty sure we got these uh, searchlights and everything already. Uh, that's, that's why it doesn't call for part numbers. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've got these other two pieces that we need. And I was going to uh, start assembling everything all together. And then the thought occurred to me, what about painting? You know, I'm going to want the, you know, yes, most, most of this is going to be the number 22 gray. But uh, the decks are not going to be the 22 gray. Would it possibly be easier to paint the deck while, while these pieces were apart? Um, on the other hand, maybe, maybe I could get my little brush in there and just carefully go around and just do the deck. Uh, you know, decisions, decisions, right? Um, anyway, I, I haven't tried this yet. Let's just see how this is going to fit here. Okay, that fits nice. And this one here, I was noticing when I was sanding it that it doesn't matter which way it goes, it's it's uh, this, the same both ways. So it's just going to go on there. Then this piece is going to... Okay, that's what I was talking about before. You know, that... that that piece that we put in there, let's get rid of this one. Okay. Uh, th this piece that we're putting in here, where is it now? Well, I think you get the picture. It, it's it's going to be completely covered up. You know, all, all this nice detail, like that little door and everything, it, it's going to be absolutely impossible to see it. <clears throat> Unless a person was to, you know, cut the windows out. You know, I, I suppose maybe somebody that was going to get, you know, really ambitious and cut the windows out and then maybe put a little a grain of wheat bulb or something in there and, and illuminate it on the inside. Yeah, that that might look good. But, I mean, uh, that's not going to be me. Okay. I've uh, glued this part and this part down. And I've uh, used the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. So I think this is going to be the first time that I've actually used it for real. And I've also glued some of these other joints together here. And I was in the process of trying to glue this part down onto here on into these uh, slots and I was noticing that I had overlooked the fact that there was a piece of sprue right there it was it was sticking out I don't know why I didn't notice it but it was sticking out about almost as much as as these little uh, square pegs that are supposed to go down into the square holes and uh, and it was holding it up um, that's one of the reasons, well, in fact, it was the main reason why it wasn't snapping together. Now it snaps together. Um, let's see if I can show you here. Just uh, pop 
pull this out just a little bit here. I'm going to have to do it off camera. Okay, there I got it. The, uh, I hope I'm holding it right for you. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and glue that down. Okay, I uh, know this looks terrible, but I've, I've actually got it very, very gently there. It's just probably only a few ounces of pressure just holding it together just so that it doesn't slowly come back apart. Well, we certainly didn't get very many of these put on today, did we? Uh, but that's all right. I think we're going to be uh, very happy that we uh, checked this out and so that we could make sure that these are going to fit in, in this part here. I, um, I want to leave this for at least an hour, which means that we're probably going to have to wind up today's video right now because there's not a whole lot I can do or, you know, uh, until, I, I, well, I suppose maybe we could put some of this on. Um, well, let's see what happens yet today. Well, um, we do have a few minutes left here, but only a very few. I think it's about 1.42, 1.43 right now in the afternoon. And uh, before we can put these braces on this piece, we have to put this on this piece. Very gently now. And it has to go Maybe I should be holding it some other way here. Okay. It has to go on here. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. And there are, I'll, I'll move in so you can see it, but there's positioning pins on here. I believe there's four of them that have to go on these four holes right here. Okay, I just checked the monitor and I didn't realize you were so far back there. And when I said these four holes right here, I didn't realize that probably the only way you could possibly have seen them is if you were watching them on a 75-inch 8K TV or something. And they do exist. Probably going to be quite common in the very near future. Um, anyway... Let's just see how this is going to fit. And I want to be very careful here. All right, those go... I'm trying to do this on camera, which might not be a good idea. You know what? I'm doing this upside down. I should be doing it... Or actually, I should be doing it upside down. I should have it like this. And then okay, should be doing it like this. That makes a lot more sense. I'm just going to very gently lay this down now, very gently. Okay. Why is this not wanting to uh, lock into place here? There we go. Got one in. There. All, all four, all four pegs are in the uh, four holes now. Now, what am I going to use? I think probably CA glue. I think CA glue be, would be the best. And then. Uh, I'm going to want to try and hold it all together all the way around so that the so that the glue yeah I'm just sort of thinking out loud here it's not that I'm trying to show it to you well that too I guess but I'm just trying to decide what what am I going to do here Okay, I basically only get one shot at this, so I don't want to screw it up. 
what I've got here is uh, CA medium. Trusting that it's going to sort of wick its way around. I know I'm not getting it all over. Okay, we're back to where we started, more or less. Alright, now we'll just move this out of the way. And... Should I try the tweezers here? Maybe I can come in at a better angle. Alright, now I want to put this one in here. Does it look like they... No, they weren't. There, we got it now. Okay. Yeah, it's locked in place. Now I want to be able to press this down you know, and hold it down all the way around while it cures. Um, I might have to take this off camera, folks. And uh, maybe I could use my mini clamps. Yeah, I'm going to just have to quickly do it off camera here before this cures in the wrong place. Now, once again, I realize this looks absolutely terrible. But I've managed to get those little clamps on there without bending anything. I think that if we leave this for about an hour or so, it's going to cure in the right place. Then if I can get those little clamps off, well, we're in business, right? Sort of. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.